Hello and welcome to GPTV on Tuesday the 12th of July. My name is Philip Kingston. And I'm Gary Peer. Gary, uh, I know the answer to the question that I'm going to ask you. But, yep. um, did did you win? Did you watch the Wimbledon final that started, of course, at 10.30 in the evening? Finished what time? Because I'm sure you watched it. Oh, did you watch it? Two. Yeah, that was fine. I uh, finished about two just before I got into Netflix, Phil. But i um, got to say, um, look, I, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I, I think I find curious hard to love you yes. know i want to love him yes i think a lot of australians are with me on that like we want to love him because i mean ash barty well everyone loved ash barty like they love pat rafter and some of those kind of ambassadors wonderful ambassadors of sport but he's hard to love phil he, he really is uh and look he got through he did a bit of a steve bradbury and got through because nadal was out sure um won the first set of course which is very exciting uh but you know, it was always a matter of time before that, that brat came out. And look, you know, he's different to McEnroe because McEnroe was bratty as well. Uh, and I love McEnroe. Did you but, love McEnroe? But McEnroe but, yeah. was bratty, yeah. but you knew that yeah. he was always going to do everything yes. possible to train to win. Yes, right? yes. So he was, the ma- he was really the master yeah. of bad behaviour, yeah, but a, with solid he, he was a, he was a kind of a, And he was kind of a classy bad boy. And... Uh, you know, Kyrgios, is, I don't think he's a classy bad boy. You know, he's a bit of a buffoon. And uh, although he did have one very good line, I think, when somebody said, you know, he said, that woman over there, it's had about 700 drinks, you know, she, can she be quiet? But uh, he gets very distracted by the crowd. He was screaming at his own family because they weren't cheering enough. And he's... Um, so there's a yeah. famous clip. I think yeah. this clip was from um, was from the, Ameri- from, from the American Open yep. where Ben Stiller, the yep. famous American actor, yes. is in the crowd. Yes, that's right. And apparently Ben... Stiller was talking, yep. and Kyrgios turns around and says, you know, t- tells him to be quiet. Yeah, uh, and then they have this thing where I'm not going to tell you how to act. Don't you tell no, me how to play tennis? <laughs> and I think no. Well, Ben Stiller ran out and had a hit at one, <laughs> at one stage. Yeah, I can't remember okay, who it was with. You know, I'm not sure it was with. Um, it might have been with uh, somebody a bit more famous. It might have been with um, Federer or something. But he did come out on the court and actually have a hit. But anyway, he uh, he, he is a uh, definitely very brash, very brassy, and very bratty. But uh, look, back and row was a classy brat. I'm not sure he's so classy. Well, uh, but I, I have to. I don't yeah. mind. Yep. I don't mind some bad behaviour at, yep. Wimb- at Wimbledon yep. because seriously, um, oh, it's very it's, snooty, it's isn't it? Yeah, so it's very posh and, and snooty so and establishment. White. Yes, um, it is. So I don't. I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind the fact that, more, he, that, he, that, he's, that he's that he comes in with a bit of shock and awe. Well, and I've got to tell you, the the uh, sponsors love him, Gary, yep. because ultimately he's a different product. Yeah, and if true. you want it, if you want your product to be out there, yep. you'd go with the bad boy. Well, Leighton Leighton Hewitt was a good bad boy. You know, yep. he'd do that whole thing. Come on. And I'm yeah. looking at you and, you know, you do the whole thing. And Pat Cash, of course, he was the first one to win Wimbledon and run up in the stands and all the English people go, oh, my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> you, know, you know, they were all like, oh, golly, golly, gee, you can't do that. And he did it. So now it's become a bit of a trademark. Everyone just runs up into the stand now to hug and kiss their girlfriend and, their, and people in their box. So Pat Cash, I think, started that. So I think Aussies, you know, look, we love an Aussie larrikin. Um, and I've got to say one thing for Kyrgios, you can love Bernie Tomic because he makes you look well-behaved, because he's the worst-behaved tennis player of all time. I think the big question we all want to know, though, and we'll wrap this this tennis segment up, will he ever fulfil his destiny? Well, not 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 so much his destiny, but will he ever fulfil his potential? potential. Look, you know, the other thing... if if he could nail it... Yep. He would be probably so one of the greatest. So let me turn this around ever. a little bit and ask yeah. you, you know, like we were always a little bit cheeky. We've always yes. been a bit on the cheeky side, which I think why people like watching this. But, you know, by virtue of our age, uh, do we become, are we like the establishment? Are we going to be all bratty, like young, you know, tattoo, sleeve tattooed real estate agents going through, you know, getting business away from us, like rising through the ranks while people, because we always fought the establishment. We didn't like the whole concept of the establishment. Are we the establishment now? Well, we're hoping, definitely I'm not. We, no, no, we're definitely no, not the I establishment. Think so. I think. I'd hate to I think, think so. Yeah. I think the question is: Can you be uh, this old and still be kind of cheeky, uh, and and loudy a little still, bit? Or? I think you can still be a disruptor, and I yeah. think we're still disruptors, Gary. Disruptive. But we've got to work very hard <laughs> yes. at making sure we're always reinventing ourselves. Oh, yeah. So you're getting uh, in the sleeve, you're getting the sleeve of tats, and uh, I'm going to get the earring, and we're going to start. Uh, Abusing people at auctions? Is that the way to go? Mate, well, mate, mind well, you, have been doing that for years in a beautiful, subtle, elegant kind of way, I suppose. But uh, is that what's going 
happen now or what? Do you know what, Gary? I think let's sure. just continue doing what we're doing and let's focus on doing yes. the best possible job. Right. But if we upset a few estate. people along the way, yes. which I am personally known to do. More so than me, I suppose. The reality yes, yeah. is, Gary, yeah. as long as, as long as, look, I think my philosophy is you're, always You're been, just misunderstood, I think, Phil. That's all. My philosophy yeah. is always been, yeah. Gary, if 20% of the crowd walk away going, oh, that Philip Kingston, he's this or he's that. Yeah. As long as I've brought 80% with yeah, me, exactly then the right. 20% really do the job that I'm looking for. Well, they for. need to get a life, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. Or just get over yourselves or just see the light side of life because life's short. We're all going to be dead. No one gets out of here alive. So you may as well enjoy yourself and have some fun along the way and don't be so precious. It doesn't matter. So the big question then, yeah. Gary, is are we having fun in this new changed market that yeah. we are clearly we've got to have in? Some fun. Yeah, we've, we've got to have some fun. I mean, some agents are a bit dour and depressed and morose. And look, the sun's shining. We've had a very sunny winter so far, Phil, haven't we? Have, we? And we it's have. been quite dry compared to other places in Australia. So I can't complain about that. I thought when you were going to ask me before uh, was how do our football teams go on the weekend? So, um, yeah, no, no, you I, want, I was going to raise say, question, well yeah. away from football, uh, shout out to my sons, Jacob and Ben, who drove down no, to Geelong. No, to Kadinia Park, did they? Geelong. Ooh, like I said to them right at the start. Oh, you don't go down this there. This is not a good it's idea. It's dangerous down there. No, no, yeah. no, you don't no go there. Melbourne yeah. supporter driving to Geelong. Well, do they go dressed in Geelong clothes just to protect themselves, you know, with Geelong hat? And, you know, the, because if you don't go down there, it's one what, of the cats. what was yeah. worse than there? Yeah, vicious, those cats. What was worse than watching? Yeah, feral cats. What, what was worse than yeah. watching? it, according yeah. to Jacob and Ben, yeah. was the long drive home oh, it's a long as a loser. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, no, it, no scarf out the window there. No. Anyway, <laughs> geez, uh, time for some soul searching, time yeah. to dig deep. And yes, Carlton, there's no question, you're having yeah. a bit of a run. Yeah, uh, bit it, of a run. It will peter out as it always does. Possibly. But, but Melbourne really needs to get their house in order because uh, we do need to win a flag at the MCG. And Otherwise, we didn't really win the do premiership. You know, do you know who we play this week, Carlton? Who do you play? We, we play Geelong. At really? the MCG, we're going to get found out this week yeah, if we're well, not right on our game. Let, let me tell you, they yeah. look strong. Anyway, oh, that's scary. wrapping up the tennis, yeah. that's wrapping up the football. football. Should we talk about croquet well, maybe? Or clearly, else? viewers, there's not much to no. tell you about the marketplace. Quiet. Look, you had one a, job, one auction you had on the weekend. Just one. We you did. can't sell the one auction that you had. We one did. auction. He only had one. Had the whole weekend to prepare. It was on Sunday. Could have had an early night. Got up nice and early. Had your, your muesli or whatever healthy stuff you have on Sunday morning. Rocked up. You looked a million dollars. What happened to you? Well, What's going I'll on? I'll tell you this, viewers. It is quiet. There's no question. There's not a lot happening. July no. is always our lowest volume month of the year. Next, of, but, next to but, January. And I say this with due respect next, next to, January, yeah. to the people that we socialised with on Saturday. So I had Saturday off. Right? Okay. Oh, did you? So we went you out. You wouldn't have known we, what to do we went, Well, that's a very, this is where this mm. story's going, Gary, because we met some friends for brunch, lunch, whatever people Meal call it. Is, it. Yeah. Whatever yeah, they do whatever, on Saturdays when we work. At 11 yep. o'clock. We, 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 we had an 11 till 1 yep. session with them. Yep. And then we went home and then some friends came over yep. to sit by our fire on Saturday night. So we had two social arrangements in the same day. Yeah, social well, butterfly. All, all I can tell you is... Work is so much easier. Is that right? And as really? much as I love these people, yeah, of course. Um, this whole I, I said to Irene, "Is this what people do yep. every weekend?" Yeah. Because well, I've got to tell you, one Saturday yep. in ten years, yep. I was exhausted. Well, our social life kind of extends to auctions and open for inspection, it does. doesn't it? And, and each other. <laughs> outside of that, there's really nothing. We've got nothing going for us at all, really. Outside of that, have we? Well, that, that, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's true. Why it's quite sad, I, isn't you know, it? We get when, found out sometimes. People say, "Why yeah. are we so happy? We're working yeah. on a Saturday and Sunday." It's our social exactly life. Right. That's, that's our social life. That's how we can. Go yeah. from property to property to property exactly and, right. and not spend more than thirty minutes yep. with any particular exactly person. Right. The only friends we've got are the people that we're in our, in our work environment. So yeah. exhausted, they're like question yeah. after. Yeah, they're talking conversations and right. that go backwards yeah. and forwards, and, you, and you've got to pay and, attention. And, and, some, and some of your friends are clever as well, which is you know we can only put it on for so long before they find you out. Really, can't they? I mean, you can say, oh yes, I've, I've read that book, but we know that you've read nothing. We know that you've really got no idea about this the stuff that they're into. This truly yeah. is today the show out. about nothing. But let's talk about uh, what did anyway, happen on the. What didn't happen is you didn't sell that block of apartments, Philip. I'm bitterly disappointed. Although I put on a suit, came this, out By, to by see the it. time this show does go to air, the block of apartments on the corner of Inkerman and Orange Grove will be sold. What a great sold. block, by the way. What a incredible. thumping, beautiful Absolutely block. Incredible. Uh, I tell you what, how that didn't sell, I really don't know. But uh, it was passing at $4 million. There's been an offer of $4 million. There's not far to go before that gets sold. If you're looking we'll at a block of up. apartments, come and see it, Philip. Uh, we did have an auction on the weekend that went particularly well. One at 31 Holroyd Avenue, Secure to Reese. If you rewind Jeremy that, Rosen's uh, what a great job yeah, he did. 
did. Does the a great job. Good on you, Nikki Chan. Served him up yeah. all of the buyers. They did. But that, that went well. If you went back to last week's show, you would have seen that we identified that as one of our uh, exciting auctions. So, uh, well done to Jeremy, the vendor there. Uh, I went to a beautiful home in Satin Street, not yet sold, Philip, but will get sold. Uh, looking in the high ones for that. And Flower Street was sold before auction. So, well done uh, on that one. It is undisclosed. But putting that aside, Gary, because yep. we're really glossing over the facts, the facts are very simple as the industry right across Australia is in that 50 to 60 percent clearance range yep. which is the sign of a market that is struggling so the market is struggling having said oh, this I don't think having struggling I wouldn't say struggling Gary, I mean, that's, you that's, know, a, you that's know, a very negative we, we promised down we kind of, promised we would talk that's just a bad attitude promised, that's not a market statistic that's not a market statistic or view that's just a bad attitude from so, someone that didn't so sell their one auction the, one auction he had that was it <laughs> Look, how hard is it? Viewers. That's it. Rest viewers, before, rest after. Viewers, the market Go and sit in a chair the, the, in the afternoon. All you have to do is sell the one auction. The market, Instead of asking too much. The market is struggling, but yep. having said that, we get these very small window of op windows yeah, of so opportunities buying opportunity where, where there are good buyers. And, and oh, I, th yeah. I think when I'm looking across... Uh, not not at just our results, no. but results in inner Melbourne. Yeah. I reckon people will look back in 2023. Damn it, we should have bought in July and go, and last go, year. And go, yeah. um, we should have taken the opportunity yep. of the dip. Yep. These dips very rarely mm. last for long. But one of the dip. problems with market psychology, of course, Gary, is that when the market does settle or drops a bit, yep. buyers that aren't experienced or buyers that are a bit nervous or yep. pessimistic buyers, of which there are quite a few, they go, oh, well, it's dropped. Maybe it'll drop more next week and one thing that we do say to people is that if you've found the house you like today it's trading at a bit of a discount today if you wait then that house won't come up again and you'll have missed that opportunity and keeping in mind viewers if you're buying a home most people are buying it for 10 to 20 years these little market ruptures along the way are buying opportunities tahini dairy phil Yes, it's that's a good very, dip. Very You're talking about dips. That's a bloody good dip, Tahini Neri. Yeah. And they've got a good hummus and a good tahina. Tahini so, Neri. So a yeah. bit of a shout out that's to Gary's one, niece yeah. and nephew-in-law yes. who run a tahini and hummus oh, yeah. business called Tahini Neri. Tahini Going on a Friday, Neri, Philly, in, it's, in Centre a, Road near Mackey Road. Centre Road, yes. Only this once is a week. a long shout out. We don't yeah. normally do this, that's but right. for family, we are prepared to yet. shamelessly I've been a bad push, uncle, push Phil. I need to do something having good. Said, having said yeah. that, Tahini Neri, yep. I've got to tell you, Gary, I've been eating hummus yep. since I that's was... A good, that's a good way for some of the Kudamundra. That's a very I've good hummus that you've come out with. Hummus. Very good. Because most Kudamundra people go, hummus. Well, they do. Hummus. Or hummus, yeah. I've been eating hummus, it's a hummus since I was very young. I yes, reckon a Middle Eastern one, a hummus. I reckon yeah. it's the best Australian-made hummus. German, I think. Yeah. I've ever had. Good on you. I, and I I've eaten to, a lot. And it's not garlicky, Phil. No, it's no, sesame, it's yeah, from Grandma's, uh, you know, recipe. Anyway, we're getting way off track, Phil. We've got that auction to talk about this Thursday, which I'm excited about, Phil. Uh, I reckon could we do it on the rooftop? Probably not, because you know, you, you, you never know. But one through twelve yep. at sixty-two Hotham Street is the block that Gary's referring to, which is just near the intersection of Ink. Yes. which means here it is your around tenants us. Yep. or your own pocket occupiers should you be selling them individually will be able to walk to Carlisle Street oh, yeah. they'll be able to walk probably even to Chapel Street from there so great location incredible building been in the same family's hands Gary for, for how forever. many years I think it was built by the family Phil. well then uh, we're this talking is decades and yeah. decades oh, yeah. oh, yeah. these are the biggest apartments I think you'll ever see it's on a very large parcel of land and it's got the most incredible rooftop. It has, Phil. Uh, we've only got about 11 auctions this weekend, so it's not a busy one for us. But uh, let's start reviewing Saturday and Sunday, shall we, Phil? Let's because jump into got eight this or weekend's nine, activities. Eight or nine on Saturday to review. Phil, we have nine auctions this weekend, over eight different suburbs, no less. Now, you're not going to be around this weekend no, to do Gary, any auctions. I'm no, I'm going to Sin City this weekend. You are weekend. going to Sin City, aren't going you? Going to Sydney on Friday yep. for a week. Yep. Uh, and, I can't, and I can't wait. Just hopefully, please, Sydney, turn on some good weather. I want good weather. I don't want rain. I don't want... I just want warmth. Sydney warmth. Bit of, bit of sunshine. Yeah. We'll be better here than Sydney recently, Phil. Uh, but have a wonderful time in Sydney. And we won't be GPTVing together for a few, few weeks no, now. No, because I'll come back. You're back, and we'll pass a bat, and then I'm going away, and then yes. we'll be back together a bit later on. Anyway, uh, it won't be together in the rest of July, no? I don't think so. Uh, let's wrap up and talk about the auctions this weekend. We are starting off with double auction action at 10.30 a.m., Phil. We're going to be in Rostown Road in Carnegie. Gary, love this apartment. This is a two-bedroom renovated apartment, and I love Rostown Road because you can walk to everywhere from there. You've got the train station on your doorstep, and you've got the fabulous Kunang Road, which... 
I've got to tell you, viewers, if you haven't been to Kunang oh, Road, you've got to get there. Go to Kunang Road. It's, it's got some of the best film. of the best cafes, completely multinational cuisine down there, and it's just jumping. Eclectic fill, eclectic crowd, and a culinary delight. Absolutely, yeah, Gary. Culinary delightful experience. Delightful culinary experience. Perhaps Phil, while Leo is in his hood in Carnegie, Jeremy Rose is doing his thing and in we, his area. We go from one incredible yes. uh, Address, jumping yep. location to another. Five at sixty Carlisle Street uh, is a fabulous one bedroom, one bathroom, one car space apartment uh, with a courtyard garden, Gary, and that apartment is bigger than the average, so great real estate. Double auction action at 11.30. We're going to be in Huntley. Leo Samuel auctions for Jack Slater. Wonderful looking property, Phil. Check out the courtyard garden with that beautiful timber deck. This is a beautiful property, Gary. Two bedrooms, a living room and a dining room, a lock-up garage, plenty of garden area. Uh, that is great real estate. Part of double auction action continues, Philip, in this great looking picture postcard perfect facade home, as you would call it, Phil. Uh, right in the buzz and hum of Octavia Street with Jeremy Rosen's again. Gary, walk to Wellington Street, walk to Fitzroy Street, walk to Albert Park Lake from this property. Three bedrooms and a bathroom. Uh, picture postcard perfect, as you've described. That is a gorgeous home and an incredible address. Uh, Phil, we're going to be in Poth Road in Murrumbina at 12.30pm. Leo Samuel auctions for Daniel Peer. Looking forward to that one. Murrumbina Road, Murrumbina. Leo Samuel loves Murrumbina. He's auctioning this terrific looking Three property. bedrooms, two bathrooms, a double lock-up garage, Gary. That is in immaculate order throughout. Beautifully done. Uh, that's a good home that you can move straight into. And, of course, you've got all of this wonderful garden area as well. Your luck will be in if you purchase this home in Luckins Road in Bentley. I'm going to be the auctioneer at 2.30pm. Gary, an incredible home. I think this home is just outstanding value with five bedrooms, two bathrooms, plenty of off-street car parking, a north-facing back garden that is just incredible. That's a good buy. Wallachry Road, Malvern, Phillip, a fantastic street, a great address, and Graham Callan is the auctioneer. Walking distance to everywhere you want to be, Gary, and the tram on your doorstep. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car space, uh, and that's got a fabulous floor plan. Just a couple of auctions on Sunday morning, Philip, at 11.30am. We are going to be in Hotham Street. Gary, we will be at uh, home number four at 93 Hotham Street, which is three bedrooms, one bathroom, uh, and a lock-up garage together with garden area. And, of course, you've got all of Carlisle Street on your doorstep. You do, Philip, and we're going to close out the auction weekend early this Sunday at 11.30am, 11 uh, 3 to Ashgrove. I've got the auction honours there with Ben Eisner. There's a wonderful two-bedroom apartment, a very affordable range in that 5 to 550 range. Phil, you can't get many two-bedroom apartments for and that. And Ashgrove's a great right location oh, because yeah. you've got the tram in Glen Huntley Road and you've got the Buran Park and you've got the shops, Glen Huntley Road in Elstonwick, Caulfield and Carnegie. So we're loving all of those streets that radiate off Glen Hunting and Road. And Phil, someone was telling me the other day about Danish Nosh, which is a little place just around oh, the corner from Ashgrove. Funny Grove. that you, know you should place? say yeah. that because we had an auction in Ashgrove a couple of months ago yep. and this is a massive shout out to Danish Nosh, which I've always driven past. I don't past. know it, yeah. Okay, so I've never ever had the opportunity to stop there, but I was in Ashgrove. Yep. I thought, I've got time before my next auction. I'm okay. going to jump, drop in and have a look. I've got to tell you, it is a knockout Bakery. Really? Knockout. Yep. Uh, and if you've never been there, drop in because I bought a number of things from there. They're absolutely beautiful. But Danish Nosh, if you've never been there, go and check it out because it's fabulous. And that is our wrap on GPTV. A bit of restaurant, a bit of footy, a bit of tennis and some real estate in there as well. A big wrap on GPTV on this mid-July episode. We are in the depths of winter, Phil, but the market's still strong. Some good opportunities and some good buys out there if you're looking to purchase. And if you want to sell and you want to do it this year, you better start thinking about it because we're planning our spring auctions well, right now. Gary, as you say that, I've mm. just been to a meeting this morning where yes. we've started signing up business for September and October. Oh, yeah. You're getting uh, very busy so, as an auctioneer So too. I've got to tell you, September, October, yeah. you know what comes after that, don't you? Uh, Melbourne Cup. No, November no. and okay. December. And oh, then right. the year's almost done. So viewers, get your roller skates on, strap yourself in, because uh, if you want to sell in 2022 and position yourself for a fabulous life, you need to be talking to us. Um, and that is a big wrap on GPTV. Uh, I will see you next week. Oh, actually, I won't see you next week. I'll see you next You'll week. You'll see you next He'll week. We'll see you after that. And we'll be back together a little bit later on. That's a big wrap on GPTV. Watch out for National Choice. I think it's running on Thursday or Friday. Could be a chance, Pick Phil. yourself up something gorgeous from Danish Nosh. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I'm Philip Kingston. Have a wonderful week.